Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ariel and I'm an herbalist and I like to talk about herbal medicine, botany, the outdoors, permaculture, and pretty much whatever I feel like in a given week. And this week I am going to do something that I've been putting off for quite some time. And that is to reorganize and rearrange and deep clean my herbal medicine cabinet. And if that sounds boring to you, that's completely understandable. I also apologize for my children yelling in the background. It is what it is. I'm fine. I'm fine. For some of you, you love a good deep clean video and organizing. And I'm here for you. I hope this is super satisfying and inspiring. And I mean, I don't know. I just hope it looks better and it's more functional when it's done. So without any further ado, let's just get started. Let's rip this off like a band-aid. Alright, cool. I've made a huge mistake. Well, this is what we're working with. It may not seem that bad on the outset, maybe a little cluttered, but let me assure you, it is. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I will do is take every single thing out of this cabinet space, a la Con Marie. As you can see, there's lots of things that don't belong, like garbage bags, and, you know, random empty spice jars that I couldn't bear to part with. And some wine, obviously. Some old kombucha. I don't know if that's still good. Yikes. Lots of empty jars. More plastic bags. And all that white dust stuff you see is not actual dirt. It's diatomaceous earth, which I used to use to, like, keep bugs away. Because when we moved in, we had a little bit of a bug problem. But no worries. There are no more bugs. And so I do not need the diatomaceous earth dust anymore. If it does not spark joy, let's get rid of it. Also, I'm sorry for the shaky camera. Me looking like an absolute snack with my stained shirt and my leave-in conditioned hair. But now is not the time for a beauty contest. Now is the time to remove everything from the cabinet, jars and all. Every single jar. Hooray. I wonder if I'll have trouble letting things go. Like, that was a glass of walnut shells that I saved. I don't really need those. I'm just gonna dump them in my garden. Why do I save the things I do? Do any of you have this problem where you like keep things for no reason? This is me occasionally showing you like cool things, just like, why do I have this? Or isn't this nice? Lots of tincture bottles, as you can see. What am I doing back there? I don't know. There's just so many things to sort through and show you. The jars are pretty heavy too. Like, I guess I make a lot of herbal medicine, but it's kind of what I do, so it makes sense. As you can see, my small daughters are definitely underfoot. But it's okay, that's just what they do, and I'm used to working around them. I can't believe I'm still not done with this, despite time-lapsing this five times the speed. I have actual bookshelves in my home, but why would I use a bookshelf when I could just shove it in an herbal cabinet? Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? That is my core collection. And this? This is my red rose tea ornament, and these are all my things piled in one place. My daughter needs some attention. BRB! This is me giving myself a pep talk. Hashtag stay strong. That's my little scale, makes me look like a drug dealer. With my capsule machine, I'll use that someday again. Making herbal capsules is a lot of work. Now I'm gonna wipe off my tinctures because they get all sticky when I just use them and then shove them back in. Yeah, very satisfying to use an alcohol wipe and get all the stickies off. And now, sadly, here are some herbs that molded. I'm just gonna throw the whole thing away. I don't got time for that. And how can I call myself an environmentalist if I don't neurotically save used tincture bottles? Live, laugh, love. Ah, uh, my Snoop Dogg wine cork. Definitely a keeper. This is gentian tincture for my slow digestion. And this is a mystery tincture, whose name I do not know. I tested it on my hand and realized that I don't know what it is, but later I discovered that it was Bupleurum, and I labeled it accordingly. In fact, I went on a label-making spree, because apparently it's just something I forget to do sometimes, and I know what things are, but that doesn't mean other people know what they are, and also I don't always know what these things are. Most of this is just me staring at things and trying to figure out what to do with them, and we're gonna skip the boring bits of it. So now the actual fun begins, I'm gonna make a tincture out of this astragalus root. I've been meaning to do this for a while. 
and it's just a very simple folk method tincture in which I dump the dried herbs in a clean jar and I pour alcohol over it and vegetable glycerin, just a little splash to give it a nice flavor and texture and extract other parts of the astragalus root. I found a bunch of dried oat straw that I need to use and I'm putting it in my French press to make some cold infused tea. I just pour water over the dried herb and that's it. You put the French press thing over it. Tea's really easy. Now we put this in the fridge and we drink it tomorrow. Now I am confused about why I have a tooth floss holder in there. And I am putting the rest of the oat straw in a jar. I'm doing a lot of this, finding any dried herbs I had stashed away and putting them in their respective jars. Sometimes I use little silica gel packets like this, and that is a desiccant that prevents mold. I save these from supplements I buy, they're infinitely useful. What could be in the mystery bag? Could it be, could it be lavender? Thank God it's lavender and not something nasty. I'm gonna make a tincture of this too. Just your traditional folk tincture will do us just fine. And of course I have to put the bag on my head because of my general appearance today. I use lavender to relieve my allergies and just generally chill me out. This is my Sakura Sugar and I don't know what to do with it. And then I realized that I can bake with it. So I'm gonna put this in the pantry so that I'll make a cake or something. I've been throwing away a lot of trash and nonsense, but I cannot bring myself to get rid of these spare tincture bottle lids. So I'm putting them in a clean little baggie and stashing them away before my coffee break. Ah, <sighs> why are there dried herbs in a egg container? Well, let me tell you. It was rainy out, so I couldn't use my outdoor herb dryer, so I used a clean, unused egg container and put a bunch of leaves, and I wanted to make a liver tincture out of this. This tincture will have sorrel, burdock leaf, calendula, and mint, and it will help my liver calm down, be less inflamed, and be able to deal with the modern world more. I am devastated because this bottle is almost gone and I only opened it today. I look like an alcoholic, but it is only for making tinctures, which is such a satisfying and fragrant process. Now I inspect my kombucha scoby and I am depressed to find that there is some green mold growing on it, so it's to the compost. Now it's time to press out some tinctures I've made in the last few months. I have my jars, I have my tinctures, and I have my dandy dandy tea strainer. You just open the jar and you put this tea strainer on the thing and you pour it in there. But sometimes you have to really squish the herbs down to get every last drop of tincture out of it. That last tincture was cleavers for liver health. And this one is tangerine peel for digestion. Look at that absolute liquid gold. I'm finally putting gloves on here because I decided to just up my sanitation game in case I end up selling some of these. My hands are clean, but gloves are even better as long as you change them. This tiny tincture is the birch bud gemotherapy preparation I made a couple months ago and made a video about. It's not a high yield, but it's such a potent medicine that this will last me probably all year. Now we have some willow bark for headaches, migraines, joint pain, all pain in the body. Here is artichoke and burdock leaves for bitters, for stimulating digestion, and for making fun mixed drinks. These ones are maple flowers harvested in spring. They are a vitamin rich tonic that can help your body deal with viruses. You can't read my crap handwriting, but this is feverfew a fever reducing and migraine treating herb that I love. It is a little bitter, but it smells amazing. I'm coming at you with Sakura Blossoms, also a pain reducer, but also a mood enhancer. So definitely something I want in my life constantly. It smells like literal heaven. In between every tincture press, I have some coffee and clean out my strainer. This one is the White Fluffy Viburnum Flowers. This makes a medicine that helps chronic cramping, whether of muscles or the uterus. Maple Bud Gemotherapy Preparation. This one was cool because it was bright scarlet red because I used the Japanese maple buds. This is Oso Berry Leaves. They smell like cucumbers and they have lots of vitamins to keep my skin healthy and pretty. This is Wild Carrot Root. It's an energy tonic that also boosts female hormones. Out of all my tinctures, this is the biggest and the heaviest. It is mullein flowers and blackberry root, which my garden produces constantly.
These herbs will help with breathing problems and asthma by strengthening the lungs and capillaries. Tinctures are sticky, so I'm always wiping down the counter. This one's especially special because my roommate and I made it out of rosemary and rose buds in the winter on a full moon from full moon water that she made. So it has a lot of good vibes in it. And both roses and rosemary help blood flow and mental acuity. I am back and it is night and of course I forgot to turn on my filming light. This first tincture I have is Melissa Lemon Balm. It is a wonderful anti-anxiety herb and it is mixed with bee balm, which does pretty much the same thing. They're both in the mint family and they both taste very minty. Now I'm being cringy and making a Blink 182 reference because is it really a fairy elf flower video if you don't cringe a little bit? Yet another cherry blossom tincture. I'm fine with this. I want all of them all the time. This is grape hyacinth from my garden and I made a aromatic, lovely little kind of perfume preparation. Here's a good one. This is ginger. Ginger elixir, alcohol and honey. You've seen me make Douglas fir elixirs. This is like ginger ale, but super powered, very spicy. This stunning lilac preparation is not quite ready to be pressed out yet. A brown sugar jalapeno salty vinaigrette I made. This is good as a salsa base and also as a marinade. It also made delicious jalapeno pickles. They were legitimately good and sweet and spicy and salty. All the things that are good in a pickle. Here's a hops glycerite that I use as a sleep aid. Unfortunately, glycerin is sticky and takes forever to press out. This super concentrate will last a long time. Here's a fun one. I made a chronic pain massage oil by soaking willow leaves in olive oil. Doing a last little cleanup and I'm gonna give these used scent herbs to the compost pile. Well, I'm not sure that you can see much of a difference, but I sure can. Everything is clean and neat and actually has labels. There's no dirt or random objects anywhere. Nothing is moldy or spent. Everything is Gucci fam. Alright, thanks for being here with me. Bye!